Hey guys, Back Photography here, back with another video. Thank you for joining me once again. Today we're looking at a really quick photo shoot that I did at Santa Monica Pier in LA in America. And I'm here with Luba and we did a photo shoot at the pier and we only shot for about 10 minutes just because it was incredibly cloudy outside and it was about to rain at any minute. So we really didn't have that much time to do the photo shoot, but we decided anyway that we would jump out get a quick photo shoot in and see if we can get some great photos before the rain starts coming in. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. We're gonna be releasing a lot more content like this in the future. So for this photo shoot, we didn't use that much equipment. All I had with me was my Sony a7R2 and a Sigma 50mm f1.4 lens. And you can achieve the same sort of look with any DSLR camera and any 50mm style lens. It doesn't have to be an f1.4. You could use something like the Canon 50mm 1.8, which is a super cheap option to get you into the world of primes. So we did a couple of photos here, but we moved on quite quickly. So I'm gonna show you a couple of photos from this part of the photo shoot. And I really like shooting right here because the, sun, um, the sea was right behind us, which meant there was absolutely no distractions in the background. And that meant that the background went super creamy and super out of focus when using our 50 mm lens at a super low aperture of f1.4. So we stuck around here a little bit longer and took a few more photos before moving on to the next location. And remember that all the raw files for this photo shoot are gonna be in the description as well. There's gonna be a link there that you can click through and it will send you to a Dropbox which has all of the raw files so you can edit them yourselves. And we're gonna edit a photo at the end of this video as well. So you can um, download that photo and edit along with me. So the next area we found was also on the beach and just on the other side of the pier. And I think it was like a lifeguard station, somewhere that the lifeguard hangs out when people are in the water. But because it was so early in the morning, we were shooting at something like 5.30 in the morning. There was pretty much nobody on the beach at all. And we thought this would be a really great place to add a little bit of color with the nice pastel sort of bluey greens of the lifeboat and adding some texture as well with the woods. And yeah, just a little bit to add some more interest into the image as well. So we got some photos here, we, tr uh, we tried a few different poses and then we moved on to the next location which was up on the pier. But because this location was so close to the one that we were just at before, we thought we'd run down over here, get a few photos before it started to rain and then jump up on top of the pier. And again for this shoot we were using a 50mm f1.4 and we stayed around 1.4 just because it was a really beautiful misty day and it made beautiful creamy backgrounds. Having that mist sort of dropping the contrast of the background, also dropping the visibility of the background and just making everything really blur out and look creamy and smooth and beautiful in the background. And you really don't need that much equipment to do a photo shoot. I really think that as long as you have a camera and a nice lens, something like a fast prime, like a 50 mil or a 35 mil or an 85 mil, Something that's shooting at 1.8 or below is perfect, but even if you are just using the kit lens or something like that, you can still get some really beautiful photos without the need for that much equipment. So here are a few of the photos from this part of the photo shoot, and then let's move on to the next section onto the pier. We really wanted to shoot inside of the Santa Monica Pier amusement park, but unfortunately it was so early in the morning that it wasn't actually open yet, but they had some benches out the front of the amusement park that were open even when the actual amusement park was closed. So we managed to get a few photos there and get some interesting photos without actually heading into the amusement park. So it was lucky that we found these benches, even though the amusement park was closed, we were still able to get a couple of good shots. So after we hopped onto the pier and we got some photos just next to the amusement park, we walked all the way around the pier and basically walked the perimeter of the pier and just took some photos at different locations that we liked the look of. First of all, we started at the, at the beginning of the pier where you walk on into the pier and out into the ocean and we got some photos on the guardrails and on places like that. And then as we kept walking, we finally got to the end of the pier and we also took some photos there at the end of the pier as well. So. It's really important, I think, that when you're shooting in a location to have a real good walk around and make sure that you don't miss anything in the location that you would otherwise if you just stuck to one place. 
because you never really know how a photo is gonna turn out until you start shooting and then have a look and see how the photo looks. So I really think it's important to walk around your location, take a few shots in a few different places, and even if some of those places don't turn out very well, you will end up getting a lot of photos that you would have missed otherwise if you'd stuck to one position and not explored the location in its entirety. So now let's take a look at some of the final images that we got on the pier from all the different locations that we shot on on the pier. Then we're gonna go into one photo in particular and we're gonna edit it from start to finish. So if you're interested in editing along, now's the time to go into the Dropbox and just download the file, all the raw files are there for the editing and follow along if you would like. All right, so this is the photo that I'm going to edit. I couldn't really decide which one to edit, to be honest. So um, I just picked one at random because it was really difficult to choose which one I liked the most. So as you can see, it's really quite orange. The color balance is really, really orange. And the reason for that is because we were shooting so early in the morning, we were kind of still seeing the blue hour while we were shooting. And because everything was so blue, my camera corrected and made everything more orange to compensate for that blue hue. So the first thing that we're gonna do is correct that blue hue, that orange hue, sorry, by just getting the temperature slider and moving that back down to a color that we think looks a little bit more natural. I think that looks about right. And you can see if you go too far, it looks a bit crazy. And then also the other way goes a bit crazy as well. So just, I'm gonna have a little play with that and see where I like it. So we can also see now that I've done that, we don't have very much contrast in this image. So for example, in the eyebrows and in the eyelashes, you can see here that they're not very, um, they're not very bold and dark like you'd expect them to be. And that's because we've got quite a low contrast in this image. You can see it in the hair as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of contrast, but we're also gonna drop the shadows a little bit as well. And also drop the blacks just a little bit too. We're also gonna add a little bit of clarity over the entire image just to make everything pop. So that basically makes the mid-tone contrast more extreme. So it makes the mid-tone shadows more dark and the mid-tone highlights more bright as well. So now that I've done that, I might just up the exposure very slightly. And then I'm gonna drop the highlights as well, just so we're not losing any of the color and detail in the background and also in the highlights as well. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the adjustment brush. Then I'm going to go in and just paint a little bit more clarity and exposure into Luba's eyes here. And also just a little bit of shadows. We don't want to go too far with this because then we'll give Luba laser beam eyes. We just want to add a little bit to make those eyes really pop. Okay, resetting my brush and now I'm going to do the same thing again for the eyebrows but not add the exposure. And this just makes the eyebrows a little bit more sharp as well. And we'll do the same thing for the lips because these are the three things that are really the focal points of a face in a portrait. Actually, what I might do is just remove that top lip adjustment there as well. Okay. So now that we've done that, I'm going to paint a little bit more shadow back into Luba's hair. Just a little bit, nothing too crazy. Just to make her hair look a little bit more dark because it's still looking a little bit gray in this photo. As you can see here, it's just very, very minimal changes, but they do make a big difference once they have all come together into the image. Okay, so that's everything I'm gonna do in Camera Raw. Now I'm gonna jump into the native Photoshop and finish off the image right now. So let's go and get the patch tool and just smooth out any of the skin um, that we see in this image that we don't think looks perfectly smooth. So I'm gonna fast forward this part of the video just because it will take about five or 10 minutes for me to edit out all of these little blemishes. So I will see you back in five or 10 minutes when I finished doing this adjustment. Okay, so that's everything for the skin smoothing on her face. I'm just gonna add a little bit more here, just remove a couple of little blemishes, and that should be enough. Okay, great, so what is the next thing we're gonna do? Well, because we're shooting at a 50 mil, and I personally like the compression that you would see on an 85 mil, 
I think that this photo would look even better if we just added a little bit more blurriness to the image. Now we can see here, this is where we can see uh, sharpness, and this is where the lens's focal plane is, and where everything is in focus. So we don't want to actually edit that and make that blurry, because that would make the scene look unnatural. So basically we're just going to make a selection of all the areas, all the way down to the focal plane, which is sharp, and then make a selection of that, and then we're gonna to go to Filter, and then click Blur, and then Gaussian Blur, and just add a pixel of that. Then we're gonna move the selection over just a little bit and do another one so we don't have any hard lines where we're making that selection and doing the blur. Then we're gonna do it for a third time, and that is everything for the blur. And you can see it's just a very subtle change, but all these little subtle changes that we're making are gonna make a really big difference overall. So there's one final thing that we're gonna do for this image, and it might be something that you've noticed in the beginning of this photo editing, and it's this little blob in the top left that we can see here. Now, what is this little blob? Well, basically, it's gonna be either some dirt that was on my sensor when I took this photo, or it could be a little bit of sand that got on the front of my lens as I was taking these photos. Because when you're shooting at the beach, it's quite often that you'll get little bits of sand in your equipment, and it's actually really bad for your camera lenses to get sand on the equipment. So if you can avoid it, make sure to keep your lenses as far away as possible from the sand, and also have things like hoods and that sort of thing to keep all of that protected. So that is everything for this photo, and I really hope you like it, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing all the edits that you guys do on this photo. I really enjoy having a look through them, so thank you to all of you who have been sending me these photos on Instagram. It's also really interesting to see how all of your editing styles differ, differ to mine, and it's interesting to see what I could have done differently that you may have done that I could incorporate in the future. So please leave a like and subscribe if you got this far into the video. I really appreciate it and it really helps me grow this channel and hopefully it will become my main full-time job and pay the bills sometime in the future. So big thank you to everyone who is subscribing and watching these videos. So that's all from me for now. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.